Okay, let's talk about statistical significance and the p-value. So let's just suppose that we look at two instructors of a Math 133 statistics course. Let's say that teacher A, in this particular term, five students fail, and teacher B, in their particular course, four students fail. So this is the key idea. Is this just an expected difference arising from different samples? We might then decide that this difference is not statistically significant. Maybe last term, teacher B had six students fail, right? We might just say, obviously, if we have different samples, we're going to have different results. Uh, let's look at another example. This time, let's suppose instead of looking at one course, we look at the average over 20 courses for both these instructors. What if teacher A has 5.2 students fail per, per course, on average, over 20 courses, whereas teacher B has only 4.1 students fail per course, on average, over 20 courses. Now here we might say, given the larger sample, this is statistically significant. What is teacher B doing that teacher A isn't doing, or vice versa? So we have to be able to decide when a difference is significant enough to say that something is statistically significant. That's the whole punchline to uh, the p-value and how it relates to something being statistically significant or not. Okay, so the p-value measures exactly measures that the difference we see is to be expected uh, that it would result in a large p-value or if we've stumbled upon something statistically significant. So just to review, if a p-value is less than 0 0.05, that's generally the cutoff value we use, if the p-value is less than 0.05, we generally say that something is statistically significant. It's a small p-value, we say, no, this isn't just a fluke, and this isn't just, just expected variation, there's something going on here. Again, a small p-value tells us, no, this wasn't a fluke, something's going on here. If a p-value is greater than 0.05, it usually means that we did notice a difference or an effect but it's not enough to claim that the difference is statistically significant. We would say, well, yeah, these two different samples had two different results, but you know, given the sample size or different factors, we would say um, it's not statistically significant, the variation. And there's a lot of things that go into this formula, which I think you've looked at in the reading. Um, but in practice, let me show you here. In practice, they don't usually spell out, uh, here's the null hypothesis, here's the level of significance, here's the alternative hypothesis. No. Again, a p-value is just a quick snapshot that tells you, if it's small, it tells you that um, the effect or the relationship shown is statistically significant. So a little p means, look at this, this is statistically significant. So if we go to this article, here it talks about a traditional classroom and it talks about an interactive classroom. In the traditional classroom, there was a positive correlation between in-class attendance and learning gain. Then I go down here, in other words, higher in-class attendance in the, in the traditional classroom was correlated with higher learning gain. So they're saying, we looked at the students who had great in-class attendance and compared them to the students who didn't have great in-class attendance and lo and behold, the students who had greater in-class attendance learned more over the, the course of the term. Now, when they say this, look, it comes with a p-value. p equals 0 0.028. Notice this is less than 0 0.05. So they're saying, yes, we notice a difference. And not only did we notice a difference, it was uh, significant enough that we don't think that it was just random or just to be expected variation. However, on the other hand, let's go here, it says in the interactive classroom, there was no correlation between in-class attendance and learning gain. And here they add a p-value. Uh, according to I'm, what I'm reading from this p-value, it happens to be that a higher in-class attendance maybe did the students who attended um, class more. Uh, their learning gains were probably somewhat different than students who didn't have great in-class attendance, but that difference wasn't solid enough or wasn't big enough or it wasn't significant enough for us to say, this is definitely a relationship. In, a, in the interactive classroom, you definitely need to have great in-class attendance or you're not going to have the same amount of learning gains. 
I'm sure an instructor would love to say that, but uh, in this particular sample, they crunched the numbers and they weren't able to make that statement. So that's basically what the p-value measures. We see a difference between two samples. Now, is this difference enough that we should pay attention to it and say that there's a cause and effect going on here or there's a definite relationship going on here, right? There's always going to be a difference between two samples. But how do we decide if it's statistically significant? That is precisely what the p-value measures for us.